Hi, this is Bill Kinney, and this is the first of perhaps two or three or four or five videos, specially intended for my Calculus 1 students. But even if you're not a Calculus 1 student in mind, I hope you can get benefit out of it, and I would encourage you to stick with it if you are interested, especially in this topic, Iteration, Dynamics, and Newton's Method. This is a Mathematica-based project number one for my Calculus students, and for those students, the first thing I should say to you in my description here is that you should put your names and POs in the spot. For example, I would type my name like this and put my PO number. And I'd also like my calculus students to highlight whatever they write, whatever they type, in blue. So go to text color and go to blue so that the grader knows what you have written. The grader will typically write their um, responses in red in spots like this where it says the grader will enter your total score in any comments here so that you understand what the grader wrote. So here's an outline of what this project includes. It includes an introduction, which gets into the topic of what, it, what is iteration all, of a, all about, iteration of a function. The next section has some exercises about iteration on a TI graphing calculator. In the next section, we use Mathematica and a command called nestList to confirm the results of the TI graphing calculator. We visualize the iterates with what are called cobweb plots in Mathematica. We talk about what are called attracting and repelling fixed points. And then we get into Newton's method, which is an iterative method to solve equations approximately, and finally get into why does Newton's method work. All right, so let's open up this section about the introduction. I would encourage you to pause the video and read this over. I'm not going to read it to you, but I'm going to try to highlight some of the main things, the main ideas that are coming across here. Again, you can pause the video and read this over. Here I'm going to go ahead and do my description. You got some function, call it f, and you're using this equation right here, it's called a recursive equation, to find a sequence of points. You start with an x sub 0, plug x sub 0 into the function to get the next value, which is called x sub 1. Then you repeat, you do it over again, you iterate, you plug x sub 1, sub 1 into the function to get x sub 2 then x sub 2 into the function to get x sub 3, and theoretically you could keep going forever. Although sometimes you, well, you often do stop at some fixed value x sub m, for example. All right, so we just keep reapplying the function f. Um, there are applications of this in computer science, certainly. You need to iterate a lot. You need to do loops. There are some, you know, biology applications. You might imagine rabbit populations growing very fast, fast like quadrupling every year. This is described right here. The initial value that you start with is called the seed, and the values that you get x1, x2, x3 after iteration are called the um, iterates, and the entire set is sometimes called the orbit, sort of emphasizing the dynamical nature, the motion of the points along a number line. All right, let's get into the next section about some exercises about using your graphing calculator. This is special for a TI graphing calculator, but perhaps something similar would work on a non-TI graphing calculator non-TI graphing calculator. Uh, you should take the time to study this example. f of x is 0.1x squared. And check these numbers, these calculations. Also check my, uh, under, try to understand my comment here about um, we're taking limits of really sequences of numbers. And just because the limit is 0, for example, doesn't necessarily mean that these iterates actually ever equal 0, but we would round them to 0 quite often. You want to describe what happens. And there are, again, four exercises here that you will use your TI graphing calculator to try to answer. We will do similar couple examples in a minute. In the next section, it's about using a command called nestList in Mathematica in this kind of way in this exercise 5 to check what you did in exercises 1, 2, 3, and 4 above and confirm your answers. For the rest of this video, I want to go over to another notebook here and consider a couple other examples that are somewhat similar to the first couple exercises that you have. So what do we have here? The example one, the function is f of x equals 0.2x plus 5. The directions say to experiment with your calculator, but I don't have this calculator, a calculator on my computer here to show you. I tried looking for a calculator emulator, but uh, it wasn't working on my Mac. So I will go ahead and use Mathematica and in the nest list command to confirm what happens here, but you should certainly experiment with your calculator when you do this kind of thing and check my work. The directions say to describe the long-term behavior of the iterates. In other words, what happens with this orbit, this dynamical mo motion of the points along a number line, for different seeds, different starting values, negative 3, 3, 20, and 6.25. You want to enter your solution in the cell, highlighting your writing, and essentially you are just going to be writing text when you do exercises 1, 2, 3, and 4 
uh, and highlight what you type in blue. I'm also going to use Mathematica, so I'm going to make it so there's a horizontal line going across there saying Mathematica is ready for input. I'm going to go ahead and enter this function with the standard way of uh, defining functions in Mathematica. Uh, use square brackets for the function arguments and use an underscore when you first define a function and I like using a colon equals to define a function. 0.2x plus 5. I can enter that. It has been entered. I can plug a number in like say this first it, the, this first seed, negative 3 and see what the output is. It's 4.4 .4. and you could check that with your calculator. 0 0.2 times negative 3. I could do it in my head is negative 0.6 plus 5 is going to be 4.4. .4. The idea of iteration, is, again, is now you take that output and make it a new input. So the next iterate would be 5.88. Okay, that would be, so in that case, x0 would be negative 3, x1 would be 4.4, x2 would be 5.88. Nestless can do this all at once. And the syntax is Nestless, capital N, capital L. Put the function name that you've defined, put the uh, seed, the starting value, negative 3, and put the number of iterates you want to see, for example, 20 of them. And there we go, there are the iterates. And what's the behavior? It seems that these iterates, if you look at them, are approaching 6.25. Mathematica is rounding them to ex equal 6.25 exactly, but that is rounding. It's actually never exactly equal to 6.25. And if I made this 0.2 a 1 fifth, for example, um, we would see that the you'd get fractions instead of decimals, and they're never equal to each other, and in fact, they're never equal to um, 6.25 exactly, if I use the capital N function and put say a 20 here, they never actually equal 6.25 exactly, okay? It's not something to really worry about too much. Let's go back to the way we originally had it. Um, now when you have it in there as a decimal, it's rounding and not rounding to 20 places. That's the way Mathematica works. Okay, there's a way we saw it. As far as describing what happens here, you could say something like this. When the seed is x0 equals negative 3, you can use this writing assistant to make subscripts, for example. Click that button, go x, well, you got to press it twice sometimes, x sub 0 equals negative 3. The iterates approach uh, 6.25. As n gets bigger or you could say as n goes to infinity. Uh, what about some other seed, like positive 3? See what happens here. Look, same thing. Okay, the iterates are still approaching 6.25. So you can now modify the answer a bit and say when the seeds are negative 3, 3, how about 20? Does 20 do the same thing? Change this 3 to a 20? Yeah, amazingly. Still approaching 6.25, though it's approaching it differently. The seeds negative 3 and 3 were below 6.25, and the iterates increased toward uh, 6.25. However, 20 is bigger than 6.25, and the iterates decreased toward 6.25. How about when the, e the seed is 6.25 exactly? I hope you can guess that it's going to stay at 6.25 all the time. And that number, 6.25, is what's called a fixed point. You could say that, in fact, 6.25 is a fixed point. It stays where it started. That's why we call it a fixed point. Again, highlight what you got there in blue so the grader knows. And you should probably have all your Mathematica work when you get to exercise five. You should show all your Mathematica work down here. Uh, delete some of it, but show some of it to make sure, make it clear to the grader that you did what you were supposed to do. You could also add when the seed is below 6.25, you should also add this, I think, the iterates increase, and when the seed is above 6.25, the iterates decrease. Okay, let's quickly consider another example. Let's do a little copy-paste action here. Uh, example two. The function's different, now it's 7x minus 4. The iterates, or the seeds are different as well. Let's go ahead and start with negative 5 as the seed, see what happens. Whoa, there are, the iterates are going off to minus infinity, it looks like. Okay, what's that in? This is the, in the quadrillions, it looks like, perhaps? Million, billion, trillion, yeah, 452 quadrillion. Negative 452 quadrillion. 
So the seed of negative 5 makes that happen. What about the seed of 0? Still, they're going off to minus infinity. What about a seed of 0. 0.66666? They're still going off to minus infinity. Now they're using scientific notation, I guess, because we're using a decimal here. I think that's the default. Still going off to minus infinity. What if I change the slash 6 to a 7? Hey, look, now they're going off to plus infinity. No negative signs anymore. What if I plug in a 2 thirds? It stays at 2 thirds. OK, interesting. What if I plug in a 1? I get that. They're going off to plus infinity. I claim your calculator might actually be giving you false results for one of those seeds. Uh, I claim it would be for the two-thirds. Mathematica is giving us exact answers. Uh, probably the reason the calculator, uh, if you have sort of a lower end model at least, is giving you false results is that it's rounding two-thirds to 0.66666. Certain number of sixes and a seven at the end. Um, and because of that, you might be seeing, even when you type in two-thirds, that the iterates eventually go to plus infinity. Maybe, maybe not. So again, you could summarize what happens when the seed is below two-thirds, and you can make two-thirds a fraction by clicking this button here if you like, two-thirds. The iterates go off to minus infinity. You can make a minus infinity if you like, minus sign escape, INF, escape. When they are above, when it is above, ah, two-thirds, the iterates go off to infinity. Uh, when the seed equals two-thirds, it stays fixed. You could type Two-thirds is a fixed point, but again, maybe your calculator is giving you false results for that. All right, and again, uh, highlight this, color it in blue. All right, I think I'll end this first video there. In the next video or two, we'll do some more examples.